How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be redoing one of my old tutorials completely in Geometry Nodes. Geometry Nodes gives you tons of control. It's a lot of fun. Before we get into that, I do want to shout out Real-Time Materials. Real-Time Materials is a pack of 200 procedural materials, photo real and fully editable, straight out of the box, right for your projects. You just install the add-on, hit Shift A, and add it straight to any of your models. Again, 200 really cool, really high quality materials. So with that, let's get into the tutorial. Now it's important to note that we are in Blender 3.0. So make sure you do have Blender 3.0. Some of this stuff may be different, um, especially some of my older Geometry Notes tutorials, some of the stuff has changed. So we're using Fields, that newer update. So let's hit shifting and get a plane and we're not even gonna use that plane. So let's click on the Geometry Nodes workspace. I'm gonna go ahead and kill this window here. I'm gonna click new and then I'm just gonna delete the group input. And the reason why we're doing that is because we can go here to the mesh primitives and go here to grid. And what's really fun about Geometry Nodes is this is a plane that's completely editable. So I'm gonna go here on my size and give it 16, generally I'll hit S8 to scale it by eight. If you do your sizes, then that's gonna be 16. This is the same as scaling it by eight. So if we go here to the wireframe view, you'll notice that we have this here. And if I hit the tab key, you can see the original geometry that I made. But in this case, on the vertices, I'm gonna just highlight and drag. You can go ahead and actually change the subdivision at any point. So I'm gonna give myself 44. That's what I did on my older project. So now we have that. Now what we're gonna do is instance some objects onto this plane, but if I do it within this same geometry nodes, um, this particular tree, it's not gonna work right when we go ahead and displace it. So what I'm gonna do here is just go ahead and displace it now. So I'm gonna go here to the modifiers, add modifier, and we're gonna go here to displace. If I can find it, am I going crazy? Oh, it's over here. Goodness gracious, all right. We're gonna click new, click on this little button right here, image or movie, and we're gonna go here to clouds, bring the depth down to zero and my size pretty far up, something like that, and we'll go ahead and edit that more later. To animate the displacement, I'm gonna go ahead and get an empty. So shift A, empty, get a plane axis, click back on the plane, and then click on the uh, modifiers on local, go to object, on object, click, click that empty. And if you click on the empty here and hit R twice, you can move it around and notice now you have that controllability here with that plane. So that's all we're gonna do there. So let's click back here to the um, modifiers and we're gonna add another geometry nodes tree. So add modifier and we're gonna go here and get another geo nodes tree so that we're separate from this one which made the grid. But again, to instance the objects on the plane, we have to get a new tree. So, We'll click on geometry nodes and maybe there is a work a workaround for that and I just don't know it, but regardless, this is what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna go ahead and shift A and right here on instance, we're gonna go here to instance on points. Click that there and then we need to go ahead and sh hit shift A, get a cube. I'm gonna hit G and move him out of the way and then we'll click back on the plane. So right up here in the outliner, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the cube into this workspace and on geometry, just put it right into the instance and you can see now we have that cube there and then I'm gonna click and drag. Oop. So I'm gonna click and drag so we can change the size of all of these at once and I'm holding shift so it's a little bit smoother of a motion or controlled. There we go, now we have our cubes. I'm gonna click on the cube and add in a bevel and then I'm gonna go ahead and give myself four segments, right click, shade smooth. And then I do wanna have kind of a thick, big, bevel, just like that. So now we have this really nice looking scene here. So now we're done pretty much with this whole thing. So now what I wanna do is start running this down the line to make it a loop. So I'm gonna click on here, I'm gonna hit M, new collection and call it loop. You can call it whatever you want. So now what we're gonna do is hit Shift A, collection instance and get click on loop. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hold down control and then so it snaps to the grid and you want it to the last line to intersect with that first line. So you can see how it's doing that right there. That's to make sure that this is going to seamlessly loop. So you want it to be just like that. And then we'll do another one. We're actually gonna do, we want four of these planes in total. Again, I'm hitting Shift D for duplicate and then we're doing that. So now that we have this whole line, I'm gonna click on this guy and I'm gonna hit Shift D and it actually duplicates this entire line 
kind of cuts out some of our work for us just like that. All right, now that we have that, I'm gonna hit the tilde key. It's right above the tab key for me. I'm gonna click front. Looks like we need to go left. Is it left that we need to go? Let's go right, that looks about right. Okay, so go right, whatever the front of your scene is. So it's right for me. I'm gonna hit shift A and click camera. The reason why I did that is so that the camera is actually pointing forward when we do that. And then I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hold down control so this camera snaps to the grid and looks like we're gonna be on the positive eight on the location. For you, it might be negative eight, uh, but for me, it's positive eight. All these numbers are pretty important if you wanna make this a seamless loop. If you're not worried about, if you're not worried about seamlessly looping it, then just put your camera wherever you wanna put it. I'm gonna click on the camera, so make sure you click on the camera, click on the little green camera icon here. I'm gonna make this really wide angle. I'm looking at 14.9 millimeters. And I'm gonna hit R and rotate it and there we go. So if I hit G and middle click, I can actually run this down the line. And this is what we're working with so far. So what I want to do now is actually animate it. I love to animate as soon as possible so I can kind of have some fun and see how it's looking. So what I'm going to do first is animate the camera. So let's go back to layout. I'm going to hit zero to go to the camera view. And then I'm going to click on the camera. Make sure in your preferences to so go edit preferences and then in your animation right here, make sure your default interpolation is set to linear. That's gonna make this a seamless loop. There's all these kind of tricks and stuff to make things seamlessly loop and can be complicated sometimes. All right, so make sure that here on the timeline, hover your, over here on the timeline, hit the back arrow to frame zero. That's so you don't have a duplicate frame at the end. I'm gonna click eight. And then I like, it looks like it's pretty good at 250 frames, so we'll leave it there. And then we'll click on negative eight. That's gonna give us a seamless loop. It looks like nothing changed, but the camera basically went that whole eight by eight or 16 by 16, what we created thing. And that's gonna make it loop. So if we press play, now we're traveling throughout over 250 frames, this camera's going through. Relatively boring. So now we're gonna animate our uh, geometry. So click on the empty, and then I'm gonna use the Z axis to animate everything because I like the way that looks. Make sure you're back there at frame zero. Click on the keyframe, go to the very end and type in 360. That's gonna make a 360 degree loop. Um, again, so it seamlessly loops. And now we have this fun, really cool looking animation. So now we have that. One thing I do wanna do, is I'm actually gonna click this guy and then I'm gonna move him up some more. We're gonna go ahead and right on this top one or the bottom one, doesn't matter. I'm gonna hit Shift D and then a right click and then bring this straight to the middle. We're gonna break this one up a little bit so we can have some other lights going in here. We're gonna use it as a light mesh light later. But let's go back to geometry nodes. And uh, we have this here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the modifiers and click that three. That basically means this node tree is on three different objects. We wanna make a new node tree, but keep the same nodes. So I'm gonna click three and right down here also click three. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this first geometry node and we're gonna hit delete geometry. I know I promised I would stop using this node so much, but it works perfect for this again. So I'm sorry, <laughs> it'll just have to keep happening. Let's get a color ramp. And then we'll plug the color into selection and we're gonna get a noise texture. So shift A, search in OI, noise texture, and we'll plug the factor into the color ramp. And there's a little setting we haven't done yet with the delete geometry node yet. So let's go ahead and bring this color ramp in. Everything looks fine, but what's weird is it's all flat now. It's not being displaced anymore. So what we need to do is on the delete geometry node, instead of deleting points, we're gonna delete faces. And now it's back to being displaced. And we can go ahead and bring down bring off some of those guys here. So now those are gonna be these little floating lights. We're gonna add emission materials to them. And they're gonna be these cool little floating lights in the scene and add just some more flare and pop to the, the design. All right, now that we're here, we can go ahead and actually start uh, shading and coloring. So let's go here to the shading tab. I'm gonna hit zero to go to my camera view. And then let's go ahead and click on the cube right here in the outliner. And then let's get a new material here. Let's make it metallic and then keep it about that bright. And you know, the brighter the material, the better. So we can have some good lighting. I'm going to collapse these two windows, click on this cube again, and let's just get a noise texture. So get a noise texture here, and then we'll get a color ramp here. And then let's just go ahead and plug the factor 
and the color into the roughness. Now we want to shade this so it's not obviously duplicated texture. So we're gonna go ahead and bring that detail to 12. We're gonna bring that roughness really high. And then we're gonna bring this color ramp in just like this, may bring this in like that. We'll kind of play with this, but we don't want any obvious looking stuff. So we'll kind of bring it up just a little bit on the black portion. And then here in this white portion, we'll bring it down a little bit. We want it relatively reflective. So now we have that. I do wanna go ahead and duplicate this cube that I made. So right here in this cube, I'm gonna hit Shift D. And then we're gonna go ahead and right here, we'll go back to geometry nodes. And so right here, make sure you have that new selected, new one selected here. We're gonna go to the last geometry nodes and instead of cube, we're gonna get cube 001. Now let's click back here to shading. Actually, we don't really need to do that. Now let's click cube 001, which is what we just selected. And then we're gonna go ahead and kill that object. So now you can see this middle one has a no material. Click new. Principle BSDF, and we'll go here to emission. Give it a kind of a faint blue and make it pretty bright. So it looks about 16. Now click on the camera and then let's just go ahead and slide across these little check marks and on screen space reflections, turn off half res, bring your trace precision all the way up. And so now we have this. Pretty good. So we're just going down our line. We have our object lights, look, look, which look really cool and weird. And then what we need to do now is deal with our world. So click on the world, bring it all the way to black. And then let's go ahead and right here on volume, on none, go to principled volume. And that's gonna give us some nice volume for our scene. So just kind of bring it maybe 0.2. And then at this point, now we can go ahead and start getting our point light. So get a light, get a point light. We'll bring it here to the middle and then bring it maybe right about here. We want it to reflect really brightly. So click on the light settings. We're gonna make this one nice and blue and then give it a power of a thousand. And you can bring it down the line if you want. So now we have that one. Let's go ahead and hit Shift D and then bring it over. So let's see, it's the green, the green arrow to bring it over. And then we'll make that one a really fiery kind of orange red. So on this other point light, I do wanna make it more deep blue. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So now we have this. Now we need to make sure to parent the lights to the camera. So point, shift, click that one, hold down control, click on the camera, and then we'll hit control P and parent the object. Guys, look, my cat just jumped in my lap. You wanna say something? I guess not. All right, so now we have that. We can press play and those lights are gonna be traveling with the camera so everything's nice and lit up. Right here on the volume, maybe bring that volume down to something like that. So it looks like 0, 0.0, I mean 0 0.1. Now we're dealing with this really cool scene and that's just about it. This is the animation. If you click the render button just to see kind of how that looks in the final animation we have this really cool scene. Actually, one last thing I like to do, click on the camera icon, go down here to color management and put your look at high contrast. That's gonna look a lot better. Now we have this really cool, really vibrant scene. And the last bit of the render, this is how we're looking. If you wanna export this as an animation, click on the printer icon here, go here to FFmpeg video. Generally I do PNG sequences, but EV is pretty stable, so I tend to just use FFmpeg video so you don't have to compile it later. Go ahead and save it wherever you wanna save it on encoding. Go here to MP4, medium quality to perceptually lossless, and then render, render animation, and you are all done. And by the end of it, you're gonna have a really cool, really beautiful geometry nodes animation. Uh, so yeah, there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I had a lot of fun kind of redoing one of my old tutorials for geometry nodes. This was a fun little exercise. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, again, check out real-time materials in the description if you're interested. And yeah, thank you guys for watching.